Today, we're gonna to take a look at a way of creating procedural vines and having them actually sort of grow uh, up objects and stick onto objects to be able to create all this sort of natural flow hanging off uh, and whatnot, as well as growing between objects. And it's gonna look quite nice. Now, I've got a lot going on here, so this uh, video is gonna be a little more lengthy than a lot of mine, um, but we're at a lot of little steps. This is 100% procedural. The flowers, the leaves, the vines, the only thing that isn't uh, is essentially uh, six little edible splines that are in here that are uh, partly naturally growing themselves, which is kind of cool. So let's get on with that. We'll get started in the front viewport. And so with the grid on, and I'm just going to go and do a shift right click grid and snap settings, or you can right click on your snap buttons up here. I'm going to make sure it's snapping to grid and S to get your uh, snap on. And then we can go a control right click and turn on line or go and create line. And I want to create a line that goes straight up. Um, and then we can uh, uh, have a look at that line. And that line uh, has, you know, got the pivot in the middle. We want it at the bottom right out of the gate. So hit insert and just move the pivot down to the bottom. And then we really we want it reset. So if I go alt right click local or change it to local up here, you'll notice that it isn't aligned up to worlds. But it's kind of just easiest if we think that way in these terms. Um, so I'm going to go over the tools panel, reset X form, and I'm going to reset that. And then we can make just make that an edible spline, collapse the uh, the X form modifier into the stack. So we're going to need two of those. Um, so I'm just going to grab another one out. Actually, going to need uh, Th three in total eventually uh, to complete this. Uh, this is going to be called the uh, main stock path. And this will become the, uh, you know, whatever uh, we want to call this, uh, branches. And um, we're going to call this one branches two. And you're going to see where those come into play in a sec. So this is going to be our main control spline. It's going to be the one we're going to be able to shape, sort of determine the overall direction that the vine is going to go in. So we're going to be able to manipulate this. So to do that, we're just going to grab and I'll just get started with something. Let's say that uh, kind of, you know, moves its way across the, uh, you know, whole thing and travels up this post, for instance, for now. I'm going to go control A, pick all the knots and just put it on smooth and uh, we'll start there. So we want this to be able to conform off to the fence so that it's sticking to the fence. There's not enough vertices really to get it to stick to the fence really well at this point uh, the, where we're at. So we're going to add a normalized spline. And in normalized spline, I'm just going to say show knots. It's redrawing the knots um, as given distance apart with seg length. So we can go and pick and choose how many knots are going to be in there. So which is nice now that uh, an edible spline, as we drag it out, it's automatically going to build us more knots. And it won't matter how far apart they are in the one that we're building below. Now we want this to conform. So we're going to grab the conform modifier and we're going to say pick some of these elements here. And we'll even take that one up top there and we'll add those in as the conform. Now, if you notice it's not conforming, it's currently pointing down negative Z. So it's trying to conform down this way. We don't want that. We want it to conform uh, it to closest. So we're going to go shrink wrap and we're going to change the next one down to closest point. And now you can see it's sticking to the fence, which is really cool. So if we go to the bottom of the stack and turn on show end result with alt tilde, Okay, and I'm just going to hit one. Um, you can see it's not working suddenly. Well, in conform, we need to turn on uh, apply to whole mesh. And so that we're in the bottom, you can see now that our control spline is off the surface and our you know actual spline, the end result of the spline is stuck to the surface. Now you're going to get problems like this in places where it gets sort of jumping between um, between you know the, the pickets and whatnot, and it's kind of stretching it like this because it's finding the closest point. Go figure. Um, and so we want to kind of try and correct some of that. So at the very top of the stack, we're going to go in and add a relax or a spline relax to be more spe specific. So I'll just show knots again so you can see it. And I'm just going to tab up the amount. And you can see that it's 
smoothing it out a little bit and making it a little better. Now, as I drop to the bottom of the stack and I enter selection, um, you know, you can see that it is updating nicely and it's staying sort of looking like it's growing from one to the other, which is really cool. Um, now up the top, um, after that, um, you know, or sorry, not, not up the top, but further down here, we want to put some noise on this. So before the conform, you know, right now our path is smooth where we've created it, but you know, vines grow, you know, kind of all over the place and whatnot. And so, um, above the normalized spline, I'm going to add a noise modifier and then we can, you know, crank up our, um, X and our Z because they're across and up and down. You really don't want to put um, you know much Y in it here um, because if it goes through the fence, it'll stick to the other side of the fence and you'll kind of get the, the spline growing through the fence boards. I'm just going to take the, the size down. And so now you can see the path is all nice and wonky. Here's a problem I just introduced. Edible spline go down to um, work on it and we lose our noise. Okay, so that's because the selection's being stacked, passed up the stack. There's no way to stop noise from working on the selection in it. So uh, in the uh, edit spline, we can just use a spline select. Um, so I'm just gonna go spline select and then make sure the sub object is turned off so that it terminates the selection going up the stack. And now when I show end result, you can see we've got our noisy, you know, stuck uh, surface, I can go and build this out as much as I like, and it'll automatically build out with this nice, noisy sort of path. Again, I'm just going to go all and just make sure they're all in smooth to make it nice, you know, so that's pretty good so far. So that is our main growth spline. Now, the vine itself is going to be very simple. It's just going to be a cylinder that we're going to create. So I'll just create one about the uh, diameter we want, and I'm going to pull it up. doesn't matter the height. Now, I've already uh, done this, so a lot of this is already sort of taken care of, but I set the sides down to six, okay? And, you know, we don't need piles of them. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot going on here, and we're going to see very little. Um, lots of height segments. We'll be able to determine how many of those we need as we go but you're going to see why the height and the segments are going to matter at this point or the, how the height isn't going to matter and the segments will matter. Okay. So I'm going to stick a taper on this and that's going to be tapered to negative one. And uh, we're going to stick this on a path. So it's going to be a path deform. And again, I'm just hitting X to get to the, uh, the search. And so path to form, and I'm going to go in and pick the path. So it does that. Now, how long does it need to be? So you could say, well, the height does matter. Well, it doesn't because we can just turn on auto stretch. You can see that the amount of segments matters, and we might want to go back down and just, you know, tweak those out and get it a little bit smoother or whatever. Um, but again, we don't need a lot of those. I'm just going to make that, you know, brownish for now too, so we know what it is. And this is going to be the... Uh, this is going to be the stock, the main stock that's uh, holding it all up. So just, you know, super simple uh, setup with that. We won't have to do anything else there uh, to, to make the stock look, re look right other than texturing it. So we'll move on to adding the small branches now, getting those to uh, climb out of it, you know, in this case. So that's going to be our next little uh, spline here, okay? And, you know, it only has two knots on it at this point. So we'll just add this and kind of build it up and you'll see where it's going and what the problems are that I had to overcome to get this to work. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, hit X. We're going to look for the array modifier. Okay, so specifically the modifier. We're going to change it from grid to spline and pick that spline. So it's going to grow out of there. And you can see them growing out and they're just kind of growing in one direction at this point, which, you know, isn't really what we're looking for. I'm going to say retain orientation. And this is, you know, I, one of them pointing up. So they should mostly be growing up is what it boils down to. Um, from there, we can then get it, you know, to random rotate. Um, you know, we could tilt them over sort of more in the general direction that we're going in if we wanted. And we could rotate them a bunch, um, you know, and, and pick other random values. We could also random scale them, you know, so we've got some random sizes going on, uh, which would be really nice. Now we want to conform these as well, uh, you know, as we go and they need to be sticking to the surface, but there's only two vertices again. So again, a 
normalize spline modifier is going to come in handy here. I'm just going to say show knots, and I'm going to pull down the um, you know, the seg length. Now, this is one of those things, as we get more and more of these splines with the array modifier, um, you know, each one of them is going to have this many, uh, you know, knots in it. Now, the issue here is going to be we're going to hit this maximum uh, knot count so uh, pretty quick, and you're going to find that there's no more knots being created. So you might want to turn that up depending on what you need as we go. So that's getting um, some knots in there. And now a conform again conform modifier and we're going to pick the same elements I guess I could have copied the other um, uh, modifier over uh, they don't work as instances by the way because of uh, you know just how what it's trying to do it can't really instance uh, in the same way same thing though shrink wrap it's going to be on closest point so now you see them uh, doing that now one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to grab that um, uh, you know, the stock path, and I'm just going to steal the spline relax off of it. Okay, so I'm just going to control drag and drop it um, over. Now, I control dragged and dropped it, made an instance. So you could right click on it, copy paste instance if you want, but control drag and drop will get you an instance. Um, so, you know, if, if they need to be separated later, we can make it unique if we need separate uh, settings. But now you can see that's all kind of sticking to it. But again, these don't have any kind of interesting noise or shape or form to them. So we could stick noises in a couple places. If we put them above the conform, the noise, so I'll just show that, we can end up um, pretty quickly with the um, them pulling away you know, from the, uh, from the actual, um, you know, stock that they're growing out of. Will that matter? Probably not. Once you got everything else going, you're never going to see it. Okay. Um, so I've left mine like that. It's not a big deal. So you can see them bouncing around. It's so the other way to do it is pull it down below the array modifier and put the noise on the original spline. So I'm actually just going to add that so that it's uh, center of it's in the right place. Um, so there's the uh, noise on there. Um, I think the center was in the right place anyways, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm only going to have to add noise now, um, you know, sideways on it, and it's going to, you know, give me some noise happening to it. Notice, no noise. Reason being is, is the normalized spline is above it. So I want that normalized spline up there uh, after the array modifier because it's going to control as the splines get longer at the bottom or the top, it'll keep them evenly distanced. You don't have to, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and copy and paste uh, that down below and allow that noise to be down below and above. So we can change the count here and we can change the count here. This one's the starting point of it. This one is going to be after all of them are created and any randomized uh, scale values and whatnot that the array is handling is going to get handled by this one. So it's actually a second one. So that one looks pretty good, but now I can go and get my noise to look right, you know, maybe, you know, turn it up a bit more. And you'll see that, you know, we've got these. Now, a lot of them look fairly similar, like they're all going to have the same kind of, you know, wiggliness to them. But the point of this is, is that, it, you know, once they're all stuck to the fence, you'll never notice. You can see they all look completely different as they're growing up. Now, I'm just at the top of the stack in this case, I'm going to put a renderable spline. Renderable spline modifier. And let's make those brown as well for now, just like this. And I'm just going to pin the stack so we can see them. And, you know, we can see there's a lot of vertices being generated in the spline. I can go right back down to the bottom of the stack here. And I'm going to turn off optimize so that it never comes up with straight ones. And I'm going to take these steps down much lower. So we're creating a whole lot less geometry in those. And in the renderable spline modifier, you know, side six tops, he could probably get away with four and then just turn up the auto smooth threshold to, you know, 180 uh, so that, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be smooth. Now, something else we want to do in the conforms is we want to offset them a little bit. So they, they sit off the uh, fence a little bit. Now, to make that easier, because we also want the main one to do that, 
um, you know, I'm just going to right click on the offset and say copy controller. And then I'm going to go back to the main stock path and go in there and say paste instance controller. And now they're tied together. So when I offset one, I'm offsetting the other. Oop, I actually just pasted it back on itself because I had my uh, stack um, uh, locked there. So whoops, wrong way to do that. So instance, there we go. So now you can see I can kind of offset them at the same time. So we'll just get it so it kind of looks like it's off the surface a bit. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect because boy, once everything gets going, it's all going to get hidden. Now, so we've now got that. I'm going to turn off things like the show knots here and even the show knots on the first branches so we don't have to see those. Uh, looks like it is off. Yeah. Um, so with those off, now let's get on to adding leaves and the like. And then we can start trying to get it to grow more naturally. So now for creating a procedural leaf, I'm just going to create a plane laying on the ground here. So, you know, about the size that a leaf is going to be. Now, if you notice, I have the segments set up already. Let's just make this green now before we forget. So at least it looks like a leaf. And the segments are set up so that, you know, I have a couple high and I only have two wide. You know, we want to keep them pretty darn low, um, you know, unless you're getting really close to these things. Uh, they're only going to be single sided, uh, you know, single sided thickness polygon. There's no need to be getting into uh, giving them shells and everything else. Again, unless you're flying right through them and you need to see that kind of detail in there. Uh, matter of fact, in my example, there is no textures being applied on anything. It's just colors through materials. So what we want to be able to do is adjust things like the length and whatnot, but we want it to be adjust the length from the root of the leaf, right? The, the base of the leaf, essentially. So we're going to add um, an X form modifier and we're going to drop that on there. And then we're going to do a little bit of wiring. So I'm just going to right click uh, pram wires, and I'm going to go and grab the X forms centers Y, which is pointing front and back. And I'm going to connect that up to the planes length parameter. Um, so it's length is going to be controlling that. And then it is going to be multiplied by 0 0.05 and just say connect. So now you can see that it's pushed the, uh, the, the you know, the plane out with sort of the, the center back and the plane's gone out, right? You know, is what it looks like. Well, if I go in and adjust the length, it adjusts now from the end. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is just go into the gizmo of the X form. So the actual gizmo of the X form, and I'm going to rotate it to stand up with angle snap on just hitting a on the keyboard and point it straight up in the scene. So again, it's lined up to the scene um, and, uh, and pointing in the right direction. Okay. We can get out of the gizmo there. We can close our pram wires and now I'm going to add a taper and the taper is going to be tapering down to uh, negative one. And, you know, we can then give it some curve and get, make it looking a little more leaf-like. Now, you know, maybe the base looks too wide. That's great because I can just go in and adjust it here and then play with the, uh, the curve to get more curve of the leaf. Now, there's also three vertices that have been jammed together here. And you can get little color problems like, you know, sort of lighting issues because, you know, it's pulled all of those three vertices together. So I'm just going to put a vertex uh, weld modifier on top of the stack and it should be okay with the default threshold you can see if you crank it up too high though it'll start start welding everything right so uh, in this case point one works but adjust your thresh threshold if you've got something like that happening so that's welding those together so we won't get lighting problems then we want to bend modifier on this and we want to cup it so i'm just going to bend it up a little bit and then find the axis that looks like it might be right none of those are right so set that to 90 and then we can go ahead and cup that leaf a little bit. Okay, so it's got, you can never see it on edge, which is nice now, and leaves kind of do that little bit of a cup. I'm gonna add another bend modifier now, and this one is gonna bend over, and it's gonna be bending out like that. So we're gonna have a nice little leaf that's gonna bend, and we can control sort of overall on all of them that, that shape and form of these, uh, you know, on them. So now all we gotta do is add an array modifier for these, and again, another array modifier, same thing. I'm going to say spline. We could put one up the main stock as well. I'm not just going to put it on these. 
So now we've got leaves, you know, growing out everywhere uh, with a count. So we can either go count or you can actually say at each knot so that the uh, normalized spline modifier that's controlling it's doing it. Um, that looks like it's just way too many. Um, I'm going to uh, just say count in this case. So there's the... Uh, you know, count of them growing out of these. And again, you could say retain orientation if you wanted. And then, you know, maybe, you know, bump them in a general direction and then crank up a bunch of randomness to kind of get them growing where you want. We could also get them to lean out in the X, you know, and sort of lean away from the fence a little bit more and get them to grow out. And we have leaves now growing up there. Now, they might be, you know, um, you know, we want them to taper off in size. Well, we can do that in the array modifier with the scale and go and say progressive. I'm just going to lock all axes. And you can see now we can control whether or not they're bigger at the bottom or bigger at the top, right? So, you know, the new ones are at the top, so they're getting smaller. And again, if we want overall size changes, we can go down to the bottom here and we can change the overall size, the overall length and whatever. Now, again, in the array, because we're using array, I'm going to say random scale and I'm going to crank in some random scale. We don't want them all the same. So we want to randomize as much as this stuff as we can. So we've got these splines again. There's an array modifier. We're doing a random scale on them, some random rotations. So everything should be as randomized as possible to start making it look right. You know, the, uh, you know, each one's kind of growing out there. Maybe the base is still a little too wide. So I'm just going to narrow those out and I'm going to go up to the taper and just make them a little wider this way. And, you know, who's going to notice? If you want, model some fancy leaves if you really think you need fancy leaves. But I like the control and how close am I getting to this? Does it look like leaves? Yes. Then that's all I really need, you know, is, is what it comes down to. So that's looking pretty cool. So I can actually go now and grab that main stock, jump to the bottom of the stack, turn on, um, you know, uh, sh uh, you know, the sub object vertices and just shift drag out new vines and it'll auto grow vines. And I'm just going to change that to smooth. You know, we'll change that to smooth and it'll grow some more vines. So let's also go down to those vines again and back to the array and I'm going to use the same ideas. I'm going to say let's do a progressive scale, lock it, and let's make the end ones get longer like they're growing further and what you'll start seeing is them trying to grow across things. Um, you might need to adjust the path a little bit to make it look a little more natural but you know you can get that. Now you can also increase those which is also increasing the amount of leaves. So you know cranking up the amount of those little uh, you know um, you know, branches coming out here is, you know, making it look quite interesting. You know, this might be a bit much, but even just adjusting the path now will allow you to be able to control uh, what that looks like. It'll, it'll completely change up the end result as you pull these around and manipulate where things are going. You can see they're growing around it. And even if you go in and uh, grow it around uh, the side kind of thing, whoops, I just extruded that. If you grew it around the side, it'll start growing around the side. So I'm just going to go in and right click and hit uh, refine and refine that some more and start pulling it around. And you can see it's actually growing around uh, behind it and then back out in front of it again. And, you know, some of them are growing through, but oh well. Um, you know, big deal, right? I mean, how, again, how much are you going to see that? Um, the closer you get them, you know, to the surfaces, the more accurate it's going to kind of be. Um, and then you can adjust things like the orientation of the, uh, the leaves more or whatever you need to do. So again, it might be just going into the uh, leaf array and, you know, giving it some uh, random rotations around the Z, which is also going to sort of change up where they sit. So randomizing things as much as possible to get them to look natural. But that's starting to get, you know, uh, vines growing. If we need the uh, end of these vines to be longer, we want them down here, then that's just going down to the original vine and just making it longer. So you can see we've got that. So here's that problem again. You can see that as soon as I turn on the uh, sub object, I'm losing some of the uh, options up here now. I could turn on 
applied a hole and it should work, but noise isn't being applied to it. So again, what I'm gonna do is just go and put in that spline select to make sure that, and it's off, and now I can go in and adjust things with show end result on alt tilde, and I can just make this longer. You can see I can just grow out the leaves down below and the array is making the ones up top even longer. So we're getting them even longer up top here. So that's gonna be back to the array maybe and, and pulling those down, you know. I'm gonna hold down control to spin this, by the way. If you hold down control, it'll speed up a spinner. If you hold down alt, it'll slow down a spinner if you didn't know. So, you know, maybe that's starting to look more like what we want. So that's kind of got leaves and whatnot going. Now we just take a look at the little flowers. So next then is the flower. And I'm gonna just start the flower with, well, you know, the leaf. So I'm just gonna copy it, Control V in place. I wanna say copy, not an instance. And I'm just gonna blow away the array modifier for now. So this is gonna become the flower. I should have named the leaf the leaf, but I haven't. So we're gonna call that flower. And we're gonna uh, just make that pink so we can see what we're doing. You know, so make nice pink flowers like I had. So I'm gonna re-add the array modifier, okay. And this time we're going to use phylotaxis. And phylotaxis is that pattern you see on the inside of a, you know, um, a sunflower with all the seeds patterned out based on the golden ratio. So I'm just going to take the count way down, you know, to something, and I'm going to take down the end radius down to just like, you know, 0 0.02 or something, and it gives us a few of these just so you can see what's going on. So actually, let's just push the end radius out. You can partly see what's going on. You can see they're moving sideways, okay? So they are actually not sort of, you know, pushing out in the direction we want them to. They're going out on X by default, and there's no way of, of changing that. So uh, instead, what we're going to do is just rotate the pivot um, to the orientation that works. And so with angle snap turned on, you can see if I rotate it 90 degrees, they're all now facing into the center, which is perfect. So I'm just gonna turn off the show end result. Um, and we can you know, pick and choose how many we're gonna have. Maybe we're gonna have you know, 11 of these or something. Our uh, you know, end radius, we want you know, like really small, um, you know, so they're pushed out. And then we can rotate them down. So I'm gonna to go to progressive and I'm gonna rotate around that Y and I'm gonna rotate them down so some of them are rotating down lower and it starts giving us a flower. Now I might want the inside ones to rotate over more as well. Best way to do that is uh, before your, um, or after the bend modifier, before the array, I'm just gonna add another X form modifier and into the gizmo, and I'm just gonna rotate that gizmo over so I can get these initial ones to be laying over sideways a bit as well, which means now I can go back into array and pull that value back down. So I can control where those initial, you know, the initial angle is uh, just with that X form and then adjust from there to be able to get my flower kind of growing what I want. Now, I've also got, you know, size. I could, again, I could go and make them smaller to begin with, and I want to make the inner ones narrow, and you'll see, and I want the outer ones to be fatter. So maybe a little bit smaller flowers. We can adjust this as we go. But in array now, I can go ahead and, uh, you know, do some progressive scaling. So I could say, well, let's scale them wider as they get down because it's progressively generating that. I could also scale them to be, you know, longer as they grow to the outside. So they're bigger, so I can pro progressively scale that. And I can give it a little bit of random scale. I could give it some random rotation, you know, if I wanted um, whatever I need. Now there's also things like uh, axial offsets, which will offset them. Um, you know, and you can axial offset them. What's interesting is if the end radius is zero, the axial offset doesn't work, okay? It's got to have just something in there and it'll function. So there you go. Uh, I've got a little flower going on now. And then exactly the same thing. I can put it on an array modifier and I can say, let's be spline and I'm going to go pick one of these again and I'm gonna get a whole pile of them, so maybe less, we'll put like three on here. I'm gonna say retain orientation on there, and then the um, you know, local rotation uh, of these and rotate them so they're pointing out mostly you know, from our fence. 
And so what you'll see is they're all crammed along this the line here. So with two of them, for instance, that's because they're starting at the base of each of the branches and then putting one at the end. So we can go down to the bottom here and we can play with a percent and push them out along that. And you can actually control kind of where they are. You could also go and give a variation on their locations. Okay. Um, you know, spread them out or whatever and change it from loop to end it'll uh, change how they're getting spread along there so you can see we can spread them out and have them grow out along that that line so that gets us some flowers going on now let's just lock that for a second and see what we're getting so we're getting these flowers growing along it same thing are they the size we're looking for so we can get down to the plane and we can make the plane smaller which will make the whole thing smaller you know, we can play around with the array values. And then, of course, in the array itself, we can go in and play around with a progressive scale again and a randomized scale. So we can make the top one smaller if we wanted. And we can go in and make a random scale so they're all random sized. And more of that randomization stuff that you do, the better this is going to look. So I'm just stepping over back to the leaf and doing some adjustments. You know, I've got them growing along, but again, I can push that, you know, percent, um, you know, out along the path. I can, you know, set it to end them at the end. I can give it some variation. And then I can think about cranking up more and more leaves if I want on each of those branches. So as we do this, we're going to get, you know, closer and closer to what we're looking for. So we could even push these off a little bit. Um, you know, you can see that you can adjust them away and push them off the, the vine a little bit. Are you going to notice? Probably not, you know, once you've got all this going on. So I can just sort of adjust this as needed and then start playing with it. So let's take a look at just sort of ways of dealing with the textures because we don't have a lot of variation going on here. So let's, let's get some variation in our colors and everything to make it look a little more natural. Now we can get some materials on them. So let's just start with the stock and the initial branches that we have here. Open my material editor and I have this basic material that's running here. Just a uh, you know physical material with an Uber Noise and the Uber Noise has some browns in it and just playing around with a bump and whatever else. I'll just close that up by hitting H to hide all the elements. But I'm just going to go and select the physical material in this case and go and apply that by hitting A. So it now has textures on it. So we have those, um, you know, brown now. Next, we're going to want to work on the flowers themselves. So let's do the flowers. Hit M again to open it. This is going to be our flowers. Now, if you notice, I'm using a multi-sub. You'll see why in a second. Okay, so with the multi-sub, I'm going to apply that and the... Um, the uh, leaves or the sorry the flowers in this case are just you know simply really really simple um, uh, you know colors just being put in in this case and I'll just close that up now one of the things you're going to notice is it probably looks better than it does from the front it looks on the back normals we're looking at the back side of them all so we'd have to use two sided material whatever I'm just going to go down to the plane and stick a normal modifier on there and just say flip normals and just flip all the normals so that we can see the front facing polygons better. So the reason they're all different is in the array modifier, I think it was already pre-set up, yep. By default, it's, um, you know, there's a random material ID uh, being applied from one to one. I'm not sure what the default is, it might be three. And so with the, um, with three on in there, I'm getting each of, each of those three uh, colors coming into the multi-sub and they're being assigned randomly along it. And you can play with phases and, and times and whatever else. So you can get it to, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, change over the, uh, over it, you know, however you want and be able to play with that. So that gets those. Same thing with the leaves. You know, we're going to have, in this case, I think I've actually got four of them. And so we're going to go into the leaves and we'll just drop those on there. And same thing, our leaves might, uh, you know, be better seen from one side than the other. And if that's the case right now, unless you want to go put the double sided on, let's put a normal modifier on there again and see which, you know, which way it looks better just in the viewport right now. 
So that looks fine. So that's getting its leaves, that's getting its flowers. We've got some random shaders going and whatnot, um, and it's starting to look pretty nice. Now it's a whole lot of tweaking going on. But last thing, let's get those overhanging vines, those vines that are like cascading out of it that aren't sticking to everything growing and get some flowers and stuff, and it'll give it a real fullness. So this is sort of like a single layer of everything at this point. It looks pretty good if you just want some, you know, sort of thin things, but if you want those sort of overgrown looking vines, uh, we're gonna go one more step and do that. So this final step is gonna get the overhanging ones done with this third uh, little branch we created. Okay, so we had the main stock, we've got the little first branches and the second branch. We're gonna to wanna to bend this over. So I'm just gonna add a bend modifier in there and just give it some bend. And of course you'll see it's not bending. Now it is possible to uh, get that to bend. Uh, if you wanted, we could go and add, uh, you know, uh, bezier handles on there and it would bend. But again, this is one of those cases where a normal spline might be best because we're going to want to put noise on it anyways um, and get these to get kind of noised up a bit. So I'm just going to say show and we're going to pull that down until we start getting a few on there um, you know that are that are going to make it look like it's bent. Now we want it bent to the front so we want 90 degrees. I'm going to have it bent out um, you know a little bit and then of course we're going to want some noise on these and we're gonna to wanna to noise them up a little bit. So I'm just gonna pull down the noise size and I'm gonna crank up some, uh, you know, a little bit of X, maybe a little bit of Y even, you know, a little bit of Z, whatever gets us something that starts looking a little bit noisy. Now we could do this after the array, which is the next thing that's gonna happen. But let's go and grab, again, let's go and grab this renderable spline. Um, whoops, uh, and I'm going to use an instance of it for now. So the branches are the same size for this point. I'm gonna open up the materials and just go and grab the material and apply that right away so that we have our material on it. And again, we can play around with our noises and stuff as we go. Um, down below the um, uh, renderable spline, I just like it at the top of the stack for some reason. I'm gonna stick the array modifier um, and with the array modifier, then we're going to pick spline and pick spline. But this time we're actually going to pick the um, original branches. So now we have branches growing out of branches. I'm going to say retain orientation. Okay. And then we're just going to tilt them over in the X. Okay. So they're out hanging down. And, you know, you can see where the noise may not be uh, the best. We could throw the noise above. And again, they're going to come off of the spline. So, you know, what is kind of giving us the best solution? Well, we're going to do some randomization. So let's see what we can get. I'm going to bring the size down until they really get squiggly. And maybe that went down a bit more again. We've got some... Uh, pretty high values here. So you can see maybe it's it's kind of overriding the bend a little bit. What does it look like below the bend? What does it look like above the bend? You know, play around how much more bend do we need uh, to get them to bend down and look like they're hanging. And then of course in the array, let's start adding a whole bunch of randomization again. So we're gonna random rotate them in Z. Okay, get them to spread out. We'll random rotate them in, in Y if we want, in X if we want. And we can start getting these looking like they're growing out. Now, if I want them kind of growing around more or less, um, you know, I can spread them out more, say around the, I guess that would be around the, uh, Zed's doing a pretty good job, uh, it would be around the uh, Y maybe it'll get us some. And of course, I can then pick the sort of average angle that they might be, you know, going in with using the local rotation. And then, of course, the same thing again here. We can uh, make sure that our spline is really low. Okay, I'm turn off the op optimize and we'll take a look what that looks like. So we don't want many polygons in those. So, you know, you can just reduce that down, probably reduce it down to one, you know, it, we'll just leave it like that for now. Um, so with that um, all set up, I'm just going to go and grab those and turn off the um, normalized spline so we're not seeing all those. And now we just need to make copies of some of the flowers and grow them out of it. So start with the leaf. I'm going to call this leaf. And we'll call that uh, 
001. And I'm just going to go in and control V and this is going to be a copy and that's going to be number two now and branches. So the, it's going to be growing out of these branches. And now we probably don't need as many, you know, just a few. Uh, we might want them smaller, you know, whatever it might be, you know, so we've got this progressive scale going on, um, you know, down at the bottom here, they're actually uh, kind of big. So let's go in and, and use our sizing and size the initial ones down and then check and make sure they're not disappearing at the top because of the, uh, the growth. But same thing with these branches. We can use the array. We can use a progressive scale locked. We can make those branches bigger or smaller at the top. And again, at the bottom, we can easily go in and just turn on the, uh, the length here. And then you can see we've got that problem with showing the end result again. Um, you know, so let's just go and do that trick with the uh, spline select and turn it off. And I can see the results now when I turn on show end result. And I'm just going to grab that top vertex and then we can scale them, the initial ones, in and out. So the bottom ones are smaller and then we can easily have the array growing longer ones up at the top. Now they're not hanging down in gravity or anything like that. It's a complete cheat, okay? So it is a, a, an utter and complete cheat just to make it look right. It's a vine, they're, they're kind of filling a scene, right? So we can just play around with some of the, the bends and whatever else, make it look like they're bending down, play around with the array values, you know, tilt them over more just to, you know, to begin with. You know, and again, playing with, you know, whatever values we need to. And there you go. We're getting all kinds of stuff going on. Let's get the flowers growing out of those as well. Um, so we've got a flower on each one. Control V again, copy. Um, and we have our flower. So I'm going to change that to be on there. And we're going to grow off this one. And again, we've got a lot. We could just make it one in this case. Um, and again, playing around with your percentages or whatever else, you know, again, variation on growth and you start getting a whole lot going on really, really quickly. What's amazing with this is, is that, you know, the, um, uh, you know, the amount of flexibility that you have to be able to control what you've got. Now I've got five of these. I'm going to reduce those hanging ones down a little bit more, maybe something like that. And now you can, you know, size your leaves, angle them, do whatever else you need to make it look cool. And we've got the um, main stock that if we go in and grab that and adjust the, um, you know, vertices to it. So if I go and grab them and move them around, the whole thing will update. Now, with all of these, you know, polygons that are happening on this, it's, yeah, it's going to start getting a little crunchy uh, with the amount that's going on here. I basically have vines growing, vines growing, vines. But you can see that I can easily just fill this in just by pulling it down because those smaller vines are trying to grow up and it's got some growing in there and it looks really pretty. There you go. There is a really uh, fun way to make vines. No plugins needed, just default max modifiers uh, and assets. And uh, we have some pretty flowers, uh, leaves with vines that are sticking and growing to things. Hope you enjoyed that.